All right. So why don't we start class in child's pose? That's what we do here. In child's pose is, you know, it's a very personal pose. You take it any way that it best suits your body and maybe even just the version of your body that's shown up on the mat today, right? The basics are pretty simple. Just bring your head to rest heavy. From there, you'll float hips back towards heels and whether or not they actually meet doesn't matter. Maybe you have your knees spread out wide or maybe they're touching underneath you. Maybe your arms are folded in at your side or reaching out in front. All of those things are less important than the fact that you are breathing. <coughs> Try to submit to a feeling of weightlessness so you're not supporting yourself with your neck or your shoulders. So as we go through this moving meditation, our practice will be guided by our breath. It's a breath that tells us when and how. It's a breath that tells us whether we should proceed or back off. And in order to establish that very clear relationship with our breath and our body, we'll start with an exhale. <laughs> start by S H like a balloon with a hole in it until you get yourself empty. And then from the bottom of that breath, fill yourself big, light yourself up, prepare yourself for what is to come. And then share that breath, make an H A sound. Ha. Now, as you start to inhale and be conscious of your breath, you'll crawl your hands out in front of you. And as you do so, think about pressing each pad of each finger deliberately into your mat and keep reaching and reaching, extending through elbows. As you claw through your mat and your wrists lift away, spiral the front part up of your elbow more up towards the ceiling by wrapping your triceps more down and forward. Press your palms now, even the webbing in between each of your fingers actively down into your mat and send your hips high and heels low, come into your downward facing. From here, take just a moment, a moment to pedal out your hips and coordinate your breath. So each movement that you make, no matter how subtle, whether it's just a rocking forward or back or even something like shaking your head out, has to coordinate with breath. As you inhale, maybe shift the weight over into your left leg, bring that heel as close to the floor as you can. And then as you exhale, relax the left leg and do the same on the right. Now, if you look back at that space in between your feet, we're looking for about six to eight inches between big toe knuckles. That distance between wrists is only sl slightly larger, maybe eight inches. From here, soften your knees. Bend your knees so much and press out with your shoulders with the intention of gluing your chest to your thighs. Then straighten out your legs, float your heels farther down towards the floor and close your eyes, exhale SH so that your body will remember this as your downward facing. On your inhale, send your right leg up. Send it up higher, higher, higher. Keep reaching and as you exhale, let it float across your left side body. From here, take just a moment to roll out through your hip. You can take any sort of movement that feels good here. You can make circles with your knee. You can come forward, bringing elbow to knee. You can maybe even just wiggle your toes. Feel that stretch all across right side body. And then go ahead and inhale, breathe, reach that leg all the way back up before gently floating it down on your exhale. 
On the left side, again, just inhale, reach up, reach back. Take another inhale to reach even more up and even more back, and then exhale, let it float across now, right side body. And again, maybe take the same movements you took on the other side, but maybe this side is different. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it serves you and it feels good in this time. Come back through center and float that leg down and all together, let's exhale, make an SH sound. Now, as you inhale, float your knees down towards your mat. Bring them so that they hover just an inch above. Keep your hips high, so keep pressing back through your shoulders like you're in a, um, maybe it's more like a modified child's pose or a modified downward facing. Keep pressing out through your shoulders. And now as you inhale, roll yourself forward, come into your upper push-up plank. Exhale, press back through your shoulders, come back into that modified child's pose or downward facing. And then inhale, roll yourself forward. One more time, exhale, press yourself back, keep your knees high, a little bit of core work here. And now, as you inhale, step yourself forward, either walk or hop yourself to the front of your mat. Hanging heavy in your forward fold, your knees are soft. Think about opening up through the lower part of your spine. Take a few rocks and a few sways, maybe interlace fingers on the back of your neck. Inhale, half lift, flatten out your spine. Bring back parallel to the floor as you really untuck your hips. Rock the weight forward into your toes though and bring hands either to shin or calves and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time, coming into your mountain pose. Sweeping arms up overhead, drawing biceps back behind ears. Close your eyes, right? You're just standing on the same two feet that you stand on every day in a way that's very familiar. And think about making these adjustments to your body without the aid of a visual. Right, so start by planting your foot evenly into your mat. So it's heels and toe knuckles pressed down. Maybe even draw up on those inner arches of your foot as you engage through the muscles above your knees, your quadriceps, feel them squeeze. Let this build heat in your body. Now draw belly button back, not only to touch spine, but then disappear it up and behind your lungs. Lift up through your heart, chin follows chest, and then draw fingers farther apart from each other, reach up towards the ceiling. Exhale, make an SH sound. And as you inhale, reach back, look back, go back, take a back bend, sending hips forward and heart back. And then exhale, forward fold. Going through that back bend a little swifter this time. Inhale, reach up, reach back. Go back and just find your edge before exhaling into your forward fold. And do that on your own. Take that for another 20 or 30 seconds. Do something that feels good. Think about bringing some mobility into the spine, maybe warming your body through your lower back and hamstrings, through your hip. One more time. Wherever you're at, take one more cycle of breath. Reach up, reach back. Exhale down into your forward fold. Now, as you inhale, lift your chest. Half lift. 
exhale, forward fold, planting hands into your mat, and then go ahead and step back into your upper push-up or plank. From here, rock that weight well forward, so face extends beyond your fingers. Tuck your tailbone forward and pull your belly button in, just like when we were standing in mountain, get it to touch your spine. Also, just like when we are in mountain, engage those muscles above your knees. You will need those over and over again during this practice, so start to become aware of them now. Take an inhale and press into your mat so your shoulder blades spread wide across your back. On your exhale, lower down, having your top of arms squeeze the side of your body, come halfway. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Exhale, make your SH sound. Shh. And then take a big, full inhale. Let it go, H-A, ha. Now inhaling the right leg up. Lift up high off of your left heel as you rock your weight forward and gently float your right foot down in the space in between your two hands. Pivot your left heel down into the floor, grounding through the outside edge of that foot and inhale yourself up into your warrior one. Let's take a little wider stance in this warrior one than you may be used to. Juan, put your left heel back down on the floor. Yeah, good. Toe heel your right foot more out to the right edge of your mat. And then maybe just for today, let your left foot creep a little farther towards that back edge and then sit deeper. Extend through both of your legs so that you feel your thighs really fire up. Left leg planted down especially actively. Take an inhale to lift your chest and really draw those biceps farther back by ears. As you exhale, release your hands down into the small of your back, interlacing fingers. Take another inhale and puff your chest. Punch the floor away from behind you. Maybe take a back bend. And then on your exhale, you'll dive forward, coming into your humble warrior with your shoulder on the inside of your thigh. Now, for some of you, this bind is quite easy. Just relax into this place and let gravity do its thing. For others, I see it's very difficult for you to reach your fingers, and that's okay. All that you should really try from this point is to just breathe. Relax your head. Shake it, yes, shake it, no. Sit lower on your exhale. Shh. Bend that th right thigh even deeper. As you inhale, release that grip. Sweep your arms up, all the way up and all the way back. And then exhale your hands down to your mat and take yourself through your flow. Inhaling to root and ground yourself into your mat. Exhaling to lower down through your chaturanga. Inhaling into your upward facing and then exhaling hips high. Heels low, downward facing. Moving swifter now, inhale, left leg up. Exhale, lift yourself all the way forward. Float left heel softly between your hands. Inhale, warrior one. Now, don't wait for me to cue these adjustments, right? Go ahead and bring that left foot to the outside edge of your left mat. Now, also, I see some hips that are starting to kind of sass out towards that left knee, right? So draw your body back into the midline by tucking your tailbone forward and then really engaging through your belly even deeper. Sit lower. On your inhale, really extend and reach through arms. Feel that engagement. And then exhale, hands down into the small of your back interlacing fingers. Take an inhale to punch your hands away from your small of your back now before exhaling yourself down and forward coming into your humble warrior and then just let go. 
Find comfort in this stillness. Juan, bring your shoulder, left shoulder, to the inside of your left thigh. Yeah, beautiful. Exhale, make an SH sound. Sit lower, it's for the last breath here. And then inhale, release, sweep your arms up overhead. Look back, go back, fall back. Exhale, hands down to your mat. Take yourself through your flow. And just like that, we'll come to a one breath, one movement sequence. It's warrior one, humble warrior, and it's all up to you. So, as I say the words, maybe I, I spend a lot of time on alignment and these points of engagement. As you feel these poses, then take them on your own. Go as fast or as slow. And if you don't feel like being aligned, then don't be aligned. Make safe choices, though, so that you don't injure yourself. But take, take this flow to be your own. And we'll take one cycle of breath and movement for each side. You take your right side however it feels best, and then you take your left side honoring yourself. And as those of you start to arrive in your downward facing, hold that space. Stay there. Stay there and experience the lengthening of your hamstring. Stay there and feel that little bit of shake and tremble that comes from that core engagement. Stay there and be a little uncomfortable in that inversion. Hold space. For those of you that are still working and for those of you that are still moving, keep moving. The rest of the room will clear the air with an SH sound. Take a full and intentional inhale and then share it. H A ha. Inhaling, right leg up, go ahead, step it forward. Meet me in the warrior one that I just watched all of you do so perfectly. Take another inhale to sit down deeper. Exhale, warrior two. Now on this warrior two, make adjustments with your legs. So the first adjustment will be that your feet need to be farther away. So if that means that you move your left foot back or right foot forward, it doesn't matter. The outside edge of left foot, your back foot, is even or parallel as best you can to the back edge of your mat and then sit down lower. Reach actively through both middle fingers as you draw shoulder blades back towards each other and then bring your chin to your right, towards your right shoulder. If your eyes are closed, great, but if they're open, let your gaze track down the back of your right middle finger. Take an inhale to just straighten out your right leg. And as you exhale, hinge forward, bring your right hand to rest either on your shin or your calf, opening up into your triangle. Tuck your tailbone more down and forward. Yes, beautiful. Both legs should be straight here. If that means that you maybe grab a place that's higher on your leg, that's okay. And I know there are a lot of different versions of this. So if you wanna put your hand on the floor, or reach for some other part of your leg. All of those things are fine. Bring your chin now to your left shoulder. Look up at the ceiling. Take a full inhale, close your eyes. Exhale deliberately so that this place sinks into your body. And then bend your right knee deep. 
Float your left hand down to your mat. Step your left leg, right leg back and take yourself through your flow. Now inhaling left leg up, meet me in warrior one. Exhale it open into warrior two. Make your adjustments. And now really briefly check in with that left knee. You can take a look down at it. Make sure that it's stacked directly over your left ankle. A lot of times in this pose, your knee has a tendency to want to collapse in towards the midline of your body. So you got to really fire through those muscles on the outside of your hip in order to draw it even. Close your eyes, exhale, SH, sit deeper. It's only for a breath. And then inhale, straighten your left leg. On your exhale, hinge yourself forward and take your triangle. Now, with your right arm, reach up, right? Reach up more towards the ceiling and let the twist, let the opening of your chest towards whichever wall or window you're facing be a product of your spine opening up and not your more mobile shoulder reaching towards the back of the room. Gaze up at the ceiling and maybe even again, have your gaze follow the back of your right arm out your right middle finger. Close your eyes, exhale, SH, remember this place. On your inhale, just bend that left knee all the way deep. So you're coming into sort of like a side angle here. Exhale your right hand down to your mat. Step your left leg back, take yourself through your flow, and then take that as your own. One breath, one movement, warrior one, warrior two, triangle. And again, at this point, it doesn't matter what I say. So if I sit here and I say nothing, please don't mistake that for me being uninterested or maybe that I've forgotten what to say. It's that there's nothing I can say to improve the situation. So nice. Those of you that are holding space in that downward facing, exhale, SH. It's a cleansing breath. It's a strong breath. It's a powerful breath. It's a you got this breath. Exhale, HA. Ha. Inhale, roll yourself forward, come into your upper push-up plank. Let's take a few push-ups together. So inhale, lower yourself down halfway. Exhale, push-up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, push-up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, push-up. We've got two more. This time, lower down super slow for three. For two, for one, hold, push up. One more time like that, lower down. Three, two, 
one and hold and push, 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 downward facing. Beautiful. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale, step it forward, breathe yourself up, warrior one. Exhale, open, warrior two. Sit deep, deep, deep into that lunge. Now, on your inhale, go ahead and just reach your right hand forward towards the front of the room, flip your palm, and then trace a line reversing your warrior, reaching up for ceiling, and then maybe even the wall behind you. Notice I didn't say anything about coming out of that lunge. I didn't say anything about straightening out that right leg in this one. So sit down deeper than you want to. And the goal here is that you open up each one of the muscles in between each one of your ribs, which will actually allow you to breathe a little bit deeper. If your head feels heavy or you can't figure out what to do with it, bring your chin towards your right shoulder. On your exhale, sit deeper. On your inhale, close your eyes and let this pose take root within your muscle memory. Before exhaling and cartwheeling your hands down to your mat, take yourself through that flow one more time that I know that you all know so well by this point of the practice. Inhale, left leg up, meet me in warrior two. Are you sitting as deep as you can? Do you feel your core engaged? Is your belly button tucked in and pulled in and drawn in, holding you in space? Is that left knee planted directly over your left ankle? And do you feel all of these things happening at once? The answer is yes, I know. So go ahead and then reach that left arm forward. Flip your palm, trace your line, take your reverse warrior. Stay deep in your left leg. Now, right arm has options. If you want to take this half bind, then you just reach it back and around, reaching for the inside of your left hip. If you want, just bring it to rest on your thigh or maybe your shin. But don't, don't, don't put it on your knee. No, we don't need that extra weight on your knee. Think about first reaching up before going back. And then sit lower, S-H, stay. Inhale, inflate your chest, it sinks in, it grows from here. And then exhale, cartwheel hands down through your flow. Take yourself through your flow. And then just like that, it'll be the last one breath, one movement of this class today. Warrior one, warrior two, reverse warrior, each side, Let it rock. So nice. If you're moving, keep moving. Downward facing means we exhale and we reset and we recharge, SH. 
inhale that new intention and new awareness and then let it go h a ha inhale right leg up and as you exhale step it forward let it land in between your hands breathe up into your warrior one exhale open into your warrior two now take an inhale here to root check your alignment check your engagement and as you exhale bring right hand down to the inside of your right foot peel left arm open into your side angle keep reaching up and extending out of your left arm before then reaching it forward towards the wall in front of you just extend that side angle and then exhale the left hand down to your mat now as you look from left to right you'll see your left hand your right hand and your foot take your right hand for ankle bind which means we're going to wrap it underneath your right thigh from the inside wrap it around counterclockwise that is so your hand comes to rest on your ankle now lift your hips up high especially today because we're going to be taking lizard later don't let this become a hybrid between lizard and ankle bind lift bring your left foot more forward if you have to so that you can straighten out your right leg as best you can draw your head and shoulder down beneath your thigh and then exhale unwind yourself bring your right hand back down to the floor open left arm back up into your side angle flip the palm of your left hand so you reach back and reach for reach back for your bind yeah you can if you can maybe just bring your right elbow to rest on top of your right thigh and let that be the leverage to peel open your shoulder if it's available then your right arm goes all the way down underneath your thigh and you collect your hands from underneath Juan, you can wrap your arm underneath for sure yeah take one more inhale puff up your chest exhale unwind yourself plant your two hands down to your mat step your right leg back take yourself through your flow Now inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step it forward and through. Meet me in warrior two. Sit a little bit deeper. Take your inhale, check in with yourself. Are you ready to progress? And then exhale. <clears throat> left hand down inside your left foot for your side angle. If you're having trouble bringing your left hand to the floor, then sit lower and the floor will get closer. Float your right arm forward now, extending the side angle. Feel that length all the way from the outside of your right foot through your ankle, knee, and hip, through your shoulder and out your right middle fingers. And then go ahead and just bring that right hand down to the floor. Now from left to right, you'll see your foot and then your left hand and then your right hand take your left hand underneath your thigh wrapping it around this time clockwise bringing your hand to rest on top of your ankle so the goal here is to bury that shoulder beto can you straighten out that left leg a little bit by bringing your right oh uh, yeah good beautiful and then just relax and breathe let your head hang heavy i know that's a funny thing to say when you're in a position like this just relax right take one more inhale and then unwind yourself plant your left hand down come back into your side angle reach up through your right arm then flip your palm reach for you re let your hand wrap around your back i don't know why i can't cue that today i'm sorry and then take your left arm reach underneath your thigh now if you have this complete bind fingers and if you have fingers then reach for wrists 
But wherever you're at, you're going to use your left arm as leverage to open up through your right side body. In the final moments, gaze up at the ceiling. Take one more full inhale. And then exhale, unwind yourself, both hands down to your mat. Take yourself through your flow. Exhale, S H. Take a big full inhale and share it. H A. <sighs> On your inhale, bend your knees, look forward, and you have your choice either step or hop or float yourself to standing at the front of your mat. From here, toe heel your two feet to touch while you're in this forward fold. And then inhale, half lift, reset your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hips down, reach your arms up and forward, palms touch, thumbs crossed, and thunderbolt. Sit down and sit back a little bit deeper, not a little bit, a whole lot deeper than you want to. Press the knife edge or the pinky side of your hand into each other even more as you reach and feel that energetic, um, energetic engagement. Draw your hands down to heart center. Take an inhale to puff up your chest. And as you exhale, twist yourself over to the right side of your room. Hook that left arm onto your right thigh and then press your palms. Again, use them for leverage to open up through your shoulder. If you're taking your bind or flying away, now is the time. Spread your arms wide. Squeeze those knees together. Feel that engagement through your inner thighs. Good, nice adjustment. Send your right hip a little more forward so your two knees are in line. And then first, bring your palms back to touch. Then come back to heart center. Then take an inhale to puff up your chest. Stay low, we're almost there. And then twist yourself over to the left side of your room. Start by working on that engagement, pressing palms into each other. Proceed with peeling left shoulder open. Now glance down, making sure that knees and even ankles are still in line with each other. And then look up at the ceiling. Fly away, take your butt. Fill yourself with one more breath, and then palms touch. Breathe back to heart center. Inhale, reach up, stand long, stand tall, do a back bend. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down to your mat. Step or hop yourself back, upper push up plank. Take yourself through your flow. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale, lift up high on your left heel, float the right foot down softly in between your hands, but this time stay lifted through that left heel and breathe yourself up into your high crescent lunge. Now, sit down lower. Sit down so low that your left knee just kisses your mat. Once it does, wiggle your left foot back until your leg is straight again, but keep your right thigh deep where it is. Let it burn a little bit. Now, draw your hands down to heart center. Take your inhale to puff up your chest and then take your twist over to the right side of the room in the same way that you just did when we had your two legs together. 
Again, now, if you're going to fly away or take your bind, it's your time. It's just a breath. We're moving a little bit quicker through this one. Palms come back to heart center wherever you are. Good, but stay deep in the lunge. Everybody go back into that lunge. Now, bring your two hands down to the floor on the inside of your right foot. Let your right foot now peel open so you're on the outside edge of it, opening up through your hip. If you need to, bring your foot more to the right edge of your mat towards the right corner. And then give yourself a rock forward and back, forward and back until you can find a nice deep place to take your lizard. Let, the outside, let that foot really peel open. Stay on the outside edge so you can sit deep. Maybe you stay planted up on your foot, but maybe you bring your knee down to the floor either way. You want to surrender to the depth in that hip. If you want to go a little farther, start to walk your hands over towards the left side of your room. And then come back through center. Roll that foot flat down onto your mat. Lift yourself back up into your lunge, tucking left toes under so you can engage through that hip. And then breathe yourself back up into your crescent lunge, reaching back and going back. Exhale, hands down to your mat. Take yourself through your flow. Inhale, left leg up. And then the second side's always easier, I think, because you know where you're going, right? So breathe yourself forward, stay high off that right heel, come into your high crescent lunge. And then come down. Your right knee just kisses the mat, and then stay deep in your left leg though. Don't extend out through your left leg, you wanna stay deep, yeah, instead, Swiggle your right foot back in order to straighten out that leg. Let it burn. Bring palms to touch. Come down through heart center. Inhale, puff up your chest. Twist over to the left side of your room. Open out through that spine. And then come back through center again, bringing both hands down to the mat on the inside now of your left foot before rolling open off of that left arch. Again, bring your left foot maybe to the outside edge or top corner of your mat so that you have a little more space. Take a few rocks, go forward and back until you find a place that you can settle into some depth. and then surrender, just for a breath or two. If you want to explore, walking your hands now over towards the right side of your room, now's a good time. And then walk your two hands back towards the center. Tuck your right toes back under if, they've, if you flattened out your foot. Post yourself back up, come into your high lunge. Reach your arms up, stay deep in it, let it burn. This is it, we'll be on the floor after this. And then exhale, hands down to your mat, take yourself through your flow. Inhale your right leg up. And as you exhale, just step it forward. This time, bend your knee and come into your half pigeon. Ideally, your right shin will be parallel to the top edge of your right mat. 
Let your knee float down towards the floor. And then relax through upper body. This pose and this part of the practice is one of those things where the pose happens when nothing's happening. Make your preliminary adjustments as quickly as possible. So left, hip extend, left foot extends directly behind left hip. If you need to make adjustments, then start to just roll that left hip more down towards the floor while you breathe. The quicker you can get here and the quicker you can let go, the more benefit that you'll ultimately get out of this pose. Exhale, make an SH sound. And then take a full and deliberate inhale. HM this time. And let that M vibrate through your skull, down your spine, out your hips. Now, as you inhale, do so. Lift your chin. Have your chin follow your chest. Reverse yourself out of this pose with a lot of intention. Walking both hands to either side of your hips. Lift your heart towards the front of your room a little farther. Now, take your left leg and just swing it forward and around so that you stack your two shins on top of each other, coming into fire log or double pigeon or whatever you feel like calling this thing today. And if your two shins don't necessarily line up, sitting cross leg here is fine. If maybe your left shin is not resting on top of your right, don't worry about that either. Come to whatever version of this you can. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, start to walk your hands forward. Stay for just another breath. And then, first it's your chin. Then it's your chest that follows your chin. Start to walk your two hands to your side. And then just flip your shins. So put your left shin on the ground and take your right leg and swing it out and around behind you coming into your half pigeon on the other side. Yeah, that's it. That's it, Ben. Just swing it back around, come into that pigeon. Beautiful. And then it's the same thing. Make those first adjustments quickly. And maybe it's okay to not be perfectly aligned. Right, your body knows the way. These poses are much older than this being. So let your body figure it out. Maybe just for today, it's okay to let your right hip be a little bit higher or your shin is not so exactly in line with the front of your mat. It's okay. Go into your breath. Try to resist the temptation to fix or fidget or at least realize whether or not that fix, fixing and fidgeting is grounded in an actual need or if it's just a function of being uncomfortable. Take a full intentional inhale. 
And then H M. Hmm. You can start by lifting your chin and then your chest. Walk your two hands to your side. Sit a little deeper. Use your hands for balance so you can maybe push your hips a little more forward. And then go ahead and swing right leg around and forward, stacking it on top of left. And you may find that this, this side, maybe your two legs, they just stack right on top of each other, like Alina's over here. Or maybe you have to take a cross leg version on this side that you didn't have to on the other side. It's okay. Most people aren't that balanced, so it's fine. Wherever you're at, whichever version you're in, then just start to walk your hands forward, relaxing through your shoulders, relax, let your head hang heavy. And if your goal is to go deeper, then maybe with each inhale, just move the pad of your finger one part of an inch farther away than where it is on each inhale. And then on each exhale, surrender into that space you just created. Inhale, lift your chin and then your chest and walk your hands to your side. And then straighten out your two legs. Shift the weight so that you are balancing more towards the top of your butt and then bring your legs up, shins parallel to the floor for your boat pose. Reach out through your arms actively. Bring your palms to touch. Take an inhale and as you exhale, twist over towards the right side of the room. As you inhale, come back to center. Exhale, go to the left side. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Now exhale, lower yourself down very slowly, lower, lengthen, and hover so that your feet and your shoulders are both six inches above your mat. And then inhale, sit up. Make sure it's muscle, not momentum. Let's do that a few more times. Exhale, lower, lengthen, hover. Inhale, sit up. Again, exhale, lower, lengthen, hover. Inhale, sit up. One more time, lower, lengthen, hover and stay. Now, Interlace your fingers in the back of your head. Don't let your feet touch the ground. Let's just do bicycle crunches from here. Right elbow touches left knee and then switch. Left elbow touches right. Keep your shoulders lifted up away from your mat. Keep your feet only six inches off the floor like they just were. Bring them low. Twist yourself more. The lower, the better. The more twist, the better. Go, go, go. Go for five more seconds for four more seconds, let it burn. This is one of those ones, if it ain't hurting, it ain't helping. Three more, two more, one more, let it go. Okay, go ahead and let your legs rock back and forth. And let's take one more pose before finding our Savasana. Please sit up and come to standing on your mat, or standing on your knees. We'll finish with the camel pose. We're gonna hold this one for a while. We're gonna hold it for a minute. We're gonna let it do its camel thing. So you may either start with your two legs parallel to each other at a fist width or hip width distance, or take whatever base you're comfortable with. Maybe move your knees a little farther apart, feet come in a little more. Tuck your hands into the small of your back. Pinch your shoulder blades into each other behind you. Lift back of heart up towards front of room and then just drop your chin out. 
Just like that, everybody is already in camera. I encourage you to maybe stay here so that you can linger in this pose for the entire time and get the full benefit rather than rushing to some more Instagram worthy expression, but then needing to abandon it part way through. Now, if you are going farther and your chin is so far back that you see the wall or floor behind you and you're releasing hands down onto heels, do so with fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outside, but wherever you're at, stay. You just have a few more cycles of breath to show up for yourself before this whole practice, this whole thing for today ends. So decide accordingly. Exit the pose with all of that beautiful integrity that you found it. And straight away come into your final Shavasana. Let the pose land in this ultimate expression of stillness that we have. Straighten out your legs and at this point, spread your feet as far apart as you like. Flip your palm, flip your hands so your palms face up. Reach down to each side. Tuck your chin and just breathe. You know, they say that a lot of these, like I said it before, some of these poses happen when nothing's happening. And this is the best example of that. Everything that we've just shared together in the last 58 minutes is taking place now. Thank you for joining us in your practice today. Yoga to the People is always a community-based organization. And whether we share our classes online or in studios, we're supported only through your donations. $12 is the suggested donation. But if you're not in a position to donate, please don't let that be a barrier for your attendance. Maybe just share the word and that will be your part. You can follow, I will post in the chat the links to our Venmo as well as the Yoga to the People um, donation page. And for those of you that are doing the fellowship challenge, I will also post my Instagram handle so that you can post a photo or something from today's class. At this moment, I hope you choose heaven over hell, peace over turbulence and love over hate. One more time as this group, please exhale, S-H. Take a full, 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 full inhale. Let this one linger so it swirls all that good prana around through your chest and through your heart. And then share it, let it go, H-A. Start by wiggling your toes and your fingers, bringing yourself back to life. You can let that movement start to move itself up into your knees and through your hips, maybe into your spine and shoulders. Rock your head and your chin. And when you're ready, maybe roll over to your right side or maybe just press up. 
Come back to your seated position. Thank you one more time for joining us.